Beis Medrash Beis Yishaya was started around 40 years ago. It was Zecha Nishmas, my father-in-law, Rabbi Shai Braun. He himself was dedicated to Torah and Yerushalayim and Erlachayit. He was nifter at a young age, and we wanted to have a shul dedicated to Zecha Nishmas. We've been a member of the shul for uh, almost 25 years. We're attracted to the shul as a Malkam Torah, Malkam Tefillah, just a very, very warm, uh, inviting kehila. Amazing, a pleasure and schus for me to be part of the shul. I'm here already about 25 years. Very, very special place. Um, the rub and the Rebbitzin make you feel at home. I dive in here every single morning. We have a very, very special minion. It's a Malkam Torah and a Malkam Tefillah, and you, you, you walk in here, it's not a social gathering, there's no talking, and um, you come out of here with a lot of Kedusha. Even though there's no talking and davening, the shul is full of varmkite, it's full of friendliness, one for another. The shul is a nice place to daven for me, my children are comfortable here. The Rav gives everyone a nice warm smile when they come, it's some place that everyone's comfortable. The Rav, should be gesund, has always treated us like a member of the family. He shares in our simchas, genuinely concerned with the uh, welfare of the members of the shul. The Rav himself, if you've ever been there, Simcha's Torah, his Simcha of, of uh, his dancing and his, his jumping up and down, and you see his mamish, his kaiches are, are unbelievable. Every Shabbos, or after Shachos, before Kriya Satera, he gives a, a drasha, a nice debris Torah. The, the way he gives it over is very easy to listen to and very enjoyable. My son, who's very involved in the shul, of Yishayah Fisher, he started Avay Subhatim. So this is a gewaldic koiches that were brought out in Beis Medrash, Beis Yishayim. Now that his son is involved, um, he brings a certain energy to the shul, the beautiful shir every Sunday morning. More recently, the shul has added additional activities in shiurim, including an Elvis Subhanim program, uh, Matzah Shabbos, which has been very well attended. There's Chabura and Halacha every Sunday, having guest speakers coming for Shal Shudas. Guess what it is, you're in. Ashaikim, 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 tell me thy chakubi. Ashaikim, 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 tell me thy chakubi. She did rack to Iru Habibi, a life in Bayosai. She did rack to Iru Habibi. He was a great Talmud Chacham. His name is Rav Yosef Kalatsky, one of the top Talmudim of Ne Israel. He said, I came here and he found that there's a Ruach of Torah in this base marriage. And therefore, he comes here to Davin all the time. And this is because he found this base marriage dedicated to Torah. I have been davening in Beis Yishaya since its inception as a wonderful Mokum of Torah and Tefillah. I can be made though that since his arrival, Rabbi Kalatsky has lifted the entire Kehillah to a new Ramah to observe the passionate intensity of his conversations with the Abishta as he pours out his heart and Tfilah to be exposed to the depth, the scope, and the beauty of his Divrei Torah has inspired and uplifted every member of our shul. I first met Rabbi Kalatsky in 1984, he was visiting New York and filling in at the Fifth Avenue Synagogue. And as I listened to him giving these divrei Torah, I said to myself, this rabbi is exceptional. And I approached him and asked him, would he be open to taking me on and perhaps a few of my friends? And he said, yes. And that was the beginning. Rabbi Kalatsky has been my rabbi for over 20 years. I've learned with him almost every day for that entire period. He's extraordinarily knowledgeable in, in all areas, but he also has tremendous insight into people as well. Close to 35 years ago, I came to New York. I had met a very special person. His name was Louis Glick. He had asked me 
if I was willing to come to New York, say Shurim in a certain location. From that, because of the level of impact of the Shurim, we created our own entity, which was known as Yad Avram, in memory of his son. The principle of the Yad Avram initially was that if you have leaders, you will have followers. And since many of these people, the core group, were in leadership positions, so many of their colleagues, their friends, also came. Baruch Hashem, within a short period of time, we had hundreds of people involved in shurim and lectures. About 28 years ago, my wife and I were having difficulty having children. I went to see a special Rav named Rav Chaim Kohn. Rabbi Kohn asked me how I was doing with my learning, and I told him I didn't know how to learn. He said, one of my colleagues works with Balchuvas and professionals in Manhattan, and I'd like to make the introduction. So I called Rabbi Kalaski. Rabbi Kalaski said to me, I would love to learn with you one hour a week. I have certain rules. I don't charge for learning, but I expect you to take the hour very seriously. About three or four weeks after starting to learn, my wife became pregnant. No medications, no doctors, no procedures, nothing. Some people go through life with an undefined, a hazy view of what they want to accomplish. Rabbi Klatsky, from the time I knew him, we were both about 16 years old, he never lost what his focus in life was. He wanted to amass as much knowledge in Tyra, as much of a madrega in Tyra, and it was a lifetime of Aliyah in Tyra, Avaida, Gmilas Chasadim, Yerashamayim, Midas Tyvis. My father was actually older than Rabbi Klatsky, many years older. They looked at Rabbi Klatsky like a rabbi, first and foremost, also a friend and a mentor. They had a bond that was inseparable. Uh, my father was born in Europe, um, in Poland, went through Shanghai during the war, had seen a previous generation, and Rabbi Kolatsky reminded him of the Rabbanim and leaders he saw growing up in a different era. 15 or, or, or 20 years ago, uh, I was working in Midtown uh, at Rockefeller Center, which was relatively convenient to coming to the Shear every morning, I was approached by uh, another firm to come join and work for them. In making my calculus of whether I should take the job or not, I, I thought about whether I, I'd be willing to give up uh, going to the Shear every morning, which was um, something I wouldn't be able to do. And after talking to Robert Kalatsky and after thinking about it, the decision was that my existing job was good enough and it was more important for me to be able to learn with Robert Kalatsky every morning, and so I did that, and it turned out to be the best career decision I ever made. Among every one of the Talmudim, every one of them, if you ask them, what is Rabbi Kalatsky to you? They say, of course, our Rebbe, our friend, and he's like family. Rabbi Kalatsky has a very big heart, and he deeply cares about all these Talmudim. He deeply cares about people's lives, where we are, what's going on. And he engages with people on that level. He's completely selfless. He himself is never in a part of the calculation. He's dedicated his life to help others, you know, people he knows, people he doesn't know, people who are very close to Yiddishkeit, people who are very far from Yiddishkeit. I think the most important thing the Rav has taught me over the years is just make the Torah the Icar. Make it the primary part of your life. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, whatever. Just make the Torah primary and your secular existence secondary. He had a Seder when we lived across from each other, five o'clock in the morning in the Beis Medrash in Seder Tyrus. Gives you an idea what his aspirations were, what his hashkafa was. Rabbi Kolatsky stands and sits near me by davening and I feel his davening. The way he davens has a tremendous hashba on myself. So this is the type of ruach that Rav Kalatsky is creating in the shul. Such a strong ruach of Torah and, and, and Yerushalayim. He taught me how to make a bracha. Watch him make a bracha. Sometimes you can't even tell a person is making a bracha. When he makes a bracha, you know it's a bracha. For that, I think I'll be eternally grateful for him. The most meaningful relationships are those that are forged in the crucible of the Eishat Taira. I revel in the fact that I have such a relationship, and therefore I can give a bracha, may umke de liba, that the Eivish to give him the kayach to continue to inspire and uplift 
all those with whom he comes in contact, Ad Bir Skoil Tzedek Bemeir of Yameinu. Rabbi Fisher, he has an Edelkeit, humility, it's a Talmud Chochem. He only has one objective, really to impress upon the people what Torah is, the Chashivas of Torah, what Haloch is, and that's his only interest. I usually don't accept honors, but because I feel the Torah is in people should appreciate what Beis Yishai is and what it has to offer and what its potential is. Hopefully, this will attract more people and it will expand its value. I just want to say thank you to the Rebbe and the Rebetzin for letting me be a Mispalo here and for welcoming me and my whole family as Mamash one of their family. I'd like to thank the Oilam that is so dedicated to the Space Medrash. This is a Mokim Torah and this is a place where people can feel they can grow. Torah, Avoida, and Gamilus Hasodim. And it's really the foundation of what a Mikdash Ma'at should be. The Beis Medrash, the Beis Akneses is a Mikdash Ma'at. And the Ebesha should give us bracha and hatzlocha that we should be able to continue this Avoida Sakhoidish.